الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا وعظيمنا وحبيبنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في سبيل دينه حتى أتاه اليقين فاللهم اجزه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحينا على سنته وأمتنا على ملته واحشرنا تحت لوائه وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا اللهم آمين In the past few weeks we have been talking about Islam and its role in public life Islam is not just a spiritual faith that you hold on in your heart do some prayers and it's finished Islam tells us to enjoy the good, forbid the evil, stand up for justice. It tells us when to fight, whom to fight, why should we fight if we have to fight. Islam actually tells us everything we need regarding whatever is important in our life. There is nothing important in our life that Islam is silent on. Nothing that worries us nothing that concerns us, nothing that scares us, nothing that tries to delude us and confuse us. There is not a single issue that we need as Muslims where the Quran is silent. It always gives us some hint or some specific answer. We spoke about this before and we tackled some of the issues last time from Surah Al-Ma'idah. But today I got you about 60 ayat or so, a comprehensive list of references that give us almost the full view, even though this is not an exhaustive list. And it only focuses on the issue of governance, hukm. Before we start the presentation, I would like first to apologize for not being able to get the English translations but I will do the translation as we go because most of the radio translations do not capture the meaning that the Arabic actually says. So I apologize for those of you who do not uh, read Arabic, but I'm going to speak in English as usual, and I hope you will be able to follow, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah that when he was to create Adam, that he was going to create a Khalifa. That's the name Allah picked from Khalifa, Yakhlufu, to succeed. Khalifa is also a steward, somebody that you entrust with something. So he talks to the angels and says, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi Khalifa. I am going to create on earth or put on earth a steward, a successor, somebody who is succeeded generation after generation after generation by the previous generation. Then they ask, Would you really put on earth somebody who would spread corruption and mischief and sheds blood? He says, I know that which you do not know in a clear direction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the angels to understand there are things behind what is seen, what is obvious. There are other things that this man will have a job to do and his job will be assigned by Allah and Allah will hold him responsible for the power he gets. So again in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the brief snapshot of the story of humanity. I hope that our Arab brothers can read it 
Is it clear on the screen? Alhamdulillah. So people used to be one nation, meaning one community, being all of them were believing, following Adam. In the beginning of mankind, all the children are following their parents, except one who strays here and there. But the, the trend was that people were, as a whole, Muslims in the beginning. Then they diverted. They started to think differently. They started to use their judgment above the judgment of Allah, their own thinking above the guidance they got from their father, Adam, and so on and so forth. So they started to deviate. فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ Then Allah started to send prophets, مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ to give glad tidings and good news and to give warnings. وَأَنزَلَ مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ and he sent down with them the book in truth. What is the purpose of the book? To judge between people in matters where they dispute. I want you to get this. Allah sending prophets and sending down the book to govern to rule, to guide, to order and be obeyed, to command and to be listened. لِيَحْكُمَ This is the purpose of the book. So the purpose of the book as defined here is not just to tell us, would you please pray? Would you please fast a month every year? Would you please be nice? No. Allah is Lord. And he is there sending us his manual to follow. And it doesn't make sense that we get somebody else, a human like us, to give us his own manual, whether it is the so-called constitution or the green book or the white draft or the Bolshevik manifesto, none of that. All of this is people's ideas. Allah wants to govern and rule our life by our submission to Him. So it's giving us the freedom to accept and the freedom to reject. But if you accept, you have no choice but to follow His guidance. And people never got into disputes until they got clear signs and evidence from Allah out of aggression and transgression against each other. So Allah guided those who believed in him to whatever truth there was to follow. So if you follow the truth, you will be guided. It is not the other way around. If you seek the truth, you will be guided. If you follow the truth, if you follow the truth, Thank you. Thank you, Brother Samir. He helped me a lot get this done, so I appreciate it. Jazakumullah khair. So to follow the truth, you have to accept the truth first. Amanu. amanu Then in Surah Al-Hadid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also clears it for us. We have sent our messengers with clear signs and evidence. And we've sent down with them the book and the scale or the balance. Why? So that people would live and stand and judge according to what is just and fair. Then this qist, this justice, this ruling, following the guidance of Allah, requires power. So Allah says, وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدِ And we've sent down iron. فِيهِ بَأْسٌ شَدِيدٌ It is very solid and very powerful and very strong. وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ Do the purpose of sending iron into the belly of the earth and enabling us to extract it and even melt it, turning it into liquid in our hand to shape it in any way we want. It is Allah who gave us this power to support the power of truth. So Islam is telling us there are two sources of power, the power of truth 
and the power that truth needs to be supported physically here. Because truth is always supported by Allah. But to be supported here against the forces of evil, aggression, and manipulation, you need the iron, you need that power. Then in Al Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the example of communities who preceded us. What did they do? They were given part of the book. What do they do with that? When they are invited to the book of Allah to judge among them, some of them will turn away in rejection. They turn away from the book of Allah. Is this about them? It is about us too. It is about us. We're being given the book. Some of us obey. Some of us like the Communist Manifesto or the capitalist way of life or this or that. And when you offer them Islam, the guidance, the light of Allah, they say, no, 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 we have it better in the other sources. So sources become very central to guidance. Where do you get your ideas from? Where do you find your idea in the book of Allah or the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? These are the sources that we should live by. In Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us. Allah commands you to give back the trusts that you have been entrusted back to their uh, due owners. وَإِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ And if you judge among people, أَن تَحْكُمُوا بِالْعَدْلِ To judge based on justice. Okay, now, is there anyone who could be as just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that gives us a ruling that governs any part of our life that could be as just as Allah? Of course not. But why do we resort to others? Because we have estranged and alienated ourselves from the book of Allah. We don't read it, we do not contact it, we do not study it. And if we study it and don't understand something, we close the book and say it's difficult. Instead of asking, instead of inquiring, instead of searching, instead of reading several ayat in the same subject, to see if they can help us understand each other. No, we close the book and say it is difficult. I don't understand. But we need to keep trying. So the Quran is telling us, give back the trusts that anyone gives you to their due lawful owners. And when and if you judge among people, judge by justice, which is another way to say, judge by the Quran, judge by the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu The following ayah in the same surah, O you who believe, obey Allah. How do I obey Allah unless I listen and read what He sent me? I can only be obedient as much as I know what the instruction is. But if I ignore the instructions, there is no way I can claim to be fully obedient. Maybe I'm doing some stuff, but that some stuff is never enough. It is never enough. And the evidence is what we live through as an ummah is not paying off. What we're doing is not paying off. Our situation is not in the best of state. We know that. There is no need to explain. Why? Because of what our hands have earned. بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ It is what your hands have earned. So Allah is saying, obey Allah and obey His Messenger. The obedience of the Messenger is a vague word until and unless we trace what He did, follow what He says, and stop where He tells us to stop. He is our model to follow. He is our model, role model. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ He is the exemplary model for any rational believer. We have a lot of believers, but they are not rational. 
they want to believe theoretically, but they want to follow someone other than Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He can't be a Muslim and follow anyone else but Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then wa ulil amri minkum and those who have authority from amongst you, not over you, not against your will. Ulil amri minkum, which means that you choose. It is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he sent a prophet from among us ourselves about Prophet Muhammad. Rasulan min anfusihim. Minhum means Allah chose him as a human from the same community. So he knows your feelings, he knows your sufferings, and he knows what solutions would help you, but he relies more on Allah's guidance to tell him what the solutions are. So it is very important to listen to those in authority that we appoint, not the ones who take power by the sword and the tank and the bullets, but those who come as elected leaders that you choose, then when you choose them, you give them a pledge of support and they give you a pledge of commitment. Those are the contracts between the ruled and the rulers. وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنْ تَنَازَعَتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ If you dispute any matter, what do you do? Refer it to Allah and to His Messenger. This is the way it should be. So, hukm or governance is very entrenched as you could see in the Quran. There is no other way around it. The Quran is telling us this is what you need to do. Hukm, hukm, hukm. And the hukm is to refer to Allah, to His book, and to His Messenger. Then the following ayah uh, is raising the same issue raised in Surah. Al Imran that we went over. Have you seen to the ones who claim to be believers that they have believed in what has been sent down unto you and what has been sent down before you? They want to use references and judgments of taghut, tyranny, tyranny, deviation from the rules of Allah. That is what taghut is. Taghut is defined according to Islamic scholars, as any ruling or any reference other than the Quran and the Sunnah. Any rule that comes from anyone that has no reference in the Quran or the Sunnah is a rule of tyranny, a rule of taghut. And that's why in Surah Al-Baqarah also Allah says, فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ There is no third way. فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَةِ He who believes in Allah, he who rejects Taghut, which is satanic rule, and believes in the rule of Allah, he has held tight to the robe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Ar-Urwatul Wuthqa. Lan fisama laha. So they want to go to the Taghut, to tyranny type rule, to seek as a source of judgment. وَقَدْ أُمِرُوا أَنْ يَكْفُرُوا بِهِ and they were commanded to reject any rule other than the rule of Allah and the guidance of his Prophet ﷺ. We look at the scene in the Muslim world and we see even inside the same country, people are divided into groups. What is the dividing line? It is between people who want Allah to govern their life and people who want to do it their way, we have to see the conflict for what it is. This is not about opinions, this is not about politics, this is not about judgment, it is about faith. If you believe in Allah, you can't accept a judgment that is contrary to the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Islam is telling us. Look forward. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Nay, by your Lord, they would never believe until they take you for a judge, a governor, a ruler over them. In matters they disputed. 
ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا they find no qualm in their heart they don't even have to struggle because they are in the full state of submission Islam is Islam to accept Allah's word and feel content with it ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا no reluctance no hesitation no second guessing you just take what Allah says as far as it is clear it is acceptable to common understanding among Muslim scholars. ثم لا يجد في أنفسهم حرجا مما قضيت and then ويسلموا تسليما and they fully submit no hesitation as we mentioned. In Surah Al-Ma'idah we went over these ayat last time so I'm not going to repeat them but I want to just draw your attention to the tale of this ayah. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Man is a general condition. It's a general statement of condition. He who does not judge by what Allah has sent down, these are the kafirun. Those are the ones who denied the message. If you don't accept Allah to be your judge, you deny Allah everything else. Pray as long as you want. Fast as many days as you can. But if you don't accept his judgment, the ayah is saying, you have rejected Allah. This is something ominous. It should scare us. The following ayah, again, we explained it before, but here is the section. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Those who judge by anything other than what Allah has sent down, they are the unjust ones. Any rule that's contrary to the rule of Allah is unfair, unjust, unacceptable, at least to the believers. Here, talk about Isa and the, and the Injil, and here it says, let the people of the Injil judge by that which Allah has sent down in it. And he who does not he who does not judge by what Allah has sent down, those are the disobedient ones. Those who want to steer themselves away, to stray away from the guidance of Allah. They are disobedient. So with all of this, if anyone then comes and says, what does Islam have to do with governance? What does Islam has to do, have to do with uh, ruling or public affairs, it has everything to do. But unfortunately, we are faced with centuries of cumulative misunderstanding, both of God and faith, because of the abuse of religion over centuries by people who misread and misinterpret their own faith, their own doctrine, and their own guidance that they received they neither accept it, nor do they leave it as is. They change it to fit their life. Where are they today from Allah? They divorced Allah completely. Do we want to do like them? Now, they have secluded Allah from public life, from public influence, right into either your mosque or church or synagogue, or maybe at your home, and better yet, keep it to yourself in your heart. So even inside the family, no two people can talk about faith because everybody is a shaitan moving on their own. Mutamarridin ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are rebelling against anything godly. This is what is happening to Muslims today. There are people who are Muslims who are running away from Allah as if there is a lion running after them. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that if you fear the most, you run to him the fastest. فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ When you run, when you flee, flee towards Allah because he is the only secure post that you can look up to. Then in Surah Al-Ma'idah also, 
it goes on the same set of ayat to tell the Prophet وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ And we've sent down unto you the book in truth, confirming that which came before it of the book, and a criterion of it, وَمُهَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ It means it is the final word of Allah, and as such, it is the ultimate judge over all what came before. Then what is the role of the Prophet? فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ Judge between them with that which Allah has sent down. بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ What is the opposite? وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ And don't follow their whims and desires and opinions and thoughts and feelings and fears and concerns. Judge by what Allah has sent down and do not follow people's opinions. This is the Quran. Don't turn to follow them away from what Allah has given you of truth. Every community, Allah has given law and a way of life. We have to follow our own. We cannot be Muslims and copy anybody in anything. We have to copy the Prophet he is the only model we need to follow. We can learn whatever is not in the Quran, whatever is not in the Sunnah from any source, from USA, from Russia, from China, from Germany, any source of knowledge that does not contradict the Quran or the Sunnah, we are invited to accept it, so long as it reaches the level of being confirmed authoritative knowledge not ideas, not philosophies. Then, reconfirming the same. وَأَنِحْكُمْ This is the following ayah. This is 48 and 49. وَأَنِحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ And judge among them with that which Allah has sent down. And don't follow their whims. Again. Again, repeating the same instruction twice in two consecutive ayahs. Why? Because Allah don't want us to turn our eyes away from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wahdarhum. Beware. Beware of them, lest they turn you away or attract you away from any or part of what Allah has sent down. Part of it. Ba'd. Don't let them turn you away from some or any of what Allah has sent down, which means leave nothing that Allah has sent down, but follow it. Don't turn to any other sources. Then what happens? فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَعَلَمْ أَنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُصِيبَهُمْ بِبَعْضِ ذُنُوبِهِمْ If they turn away, you need to be aware that Allah then wants to punish them for whatever they have committed of sins. What is this in reference to? You don't obey Allah, you follow your own way, you will get yourself in trouble. You will get yourself in trouble. This is what the ayah is saying. So anyone who continues to say, what does politics or policy have to do with Islam? What does Allah have to do with our public life? We should manage our life. Allah gave us a mind to think and reflect. Yeah, but the function of this mind is to do three things. Reflect upon the creation of Allah. Understand the word of Allah and how to apply it and inquire and investigate and develop this life all you can from there forward. This is what the mind is for. It is not to compete with the revelation of Allah. It is not to compete with the guidance of Allah, let alone give itself overriding precedent over what Allah. You see, it is one thing to say, I'm not following Allah. That is kufr. But it is much more kufr to say, I am following myself. <laughs> because then I am making myself God instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is dangerous. This is not philosophy, this is not Islamic thinking, as you say, this is Qur'an.
and we have to be careful how to read it, how to apply it in our life. Then at the conclusion, the following ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah, أَفَحُكْمَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ يَبْغُونَ Do you want to turn your life back into the life and the rule of jahiliya? Is this what we want? And in fact, this is what we're getting. Because if we unite as Muslims to accept Allah's word and to follow his guidance and to model after the Prophet Sallallahu our life, our family, our behavior, our communities, we would be likely to be united. But the reason we are not, in fact, united is everybody either is his own God or he is worshiping another God other than Allah. Everybody has a reference. Look at Germany, what they are doing. This is democracy. Look at the US, this is democracy. The, what about Islam? Where is Islam? We're looking for guidance everywhere except in Allah's book. And this is why we are punishing ourselves. It is like a patient who is deliberately taking the wrong pills that cause him more disease than cure. And then the question, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمًا لِقَوْمٍ يُوقِنُونَ If you truly believe in Allah, ask yourself, who is better than Allah in giving guidance, ruling, and judgment? If there's someone better, in Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet وسلم, say, I have been forbidden from worshiping the ones that you call other than Allah, the ones that you worship other than Allah. قُلْ لَا أَتَّبِعُ أَهْوَاءَكُمْ I follow not your whims and desires. Why? قَدْ ضَلَلْتُ إِذًا وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُهْتَدِينَ Then I would be badly misguided. I will have gone astray doing that. And I'm not guided. We think Muslims today who are not following the Quran, who are not following the Sunnah, have fallen victims of their own choices. They went astray and they are not guided. The problem is they think they are. Some Muslims think they are guided. Then he follows. Say, O Muhammad, I am on a clear guidance from my Lord, and you belied him. I have nothing of the punishment you are urging and hastening. In al illa lillah. Look at this. Governance and ruling and judgment is exclusively for Allah. Allah is the one who tells us to go right or go left or go forward or sit down or stand up or go back. Only Allah who gave us this body can move this body anywhere. In al illa lillah. The ruler in the Muslim context is ruling on behalf of the people but he has no authority of his own to make laws or rulings that are contrary to Islam. Because the, the primary main contract is that both the ruled and the rulers in a Muslim nation should contract the Quran to be their reference, not any other source. Yes, we can have a constitution, but the Quran should be at the heart of it. The Sunnah of the Prophet should be at the heart of it. Not to be excluding Islam from public life and say we have a contract. There is no contract if it violates Allah's ruling. Yusuf السلام, when he was talking to his fellow inmates when they found him to be a righteous person to use as a reference, he told them, you guys are worshiping others other than Allah. And those are mere names that you invented. These are names. They, they are nothing. In here illa asma'un sammaytumuha. Antum wa aba'ukum. These are names you inherited from your parents, but they have no existence and no value in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ma anzal Allah biha min sultan. These were not authorized by Allah. 
Look at this, Sultan, to authorize, to give power, to give authority, okay? So when we use or worship or follow any guidance other than Allah, we have no authority to do that. Again, in al illa lillah. Governance and ruling is only according to the authority that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invests in you as a community and the ruler you choose. So Allah gave you the power to choose your ruler and he gave him the power to judge over you, but you both are bound by the guidance of Allah. This is what it is. So the people have a role in choosing the ruler, but they have no role in deciding what the reference is. The reference is the Quran, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah talks to Dawood in Surah Sa'd. Allah talks to Dawood, O oh David, we have appointed you as a succeeding leader, Khalifa. You came after someone else, which means you will be gone, Khalifa. Takhlufu wa tukhlaf. You succeed somebody and somebody will succeed you, which means the period you are in power is only short and it is a trust. You're not going to be there forever, Khalifa. It's something that recycles. Fil ard. Fahkum bayna nasi bil haq. Where is al haq? Judge among people by truth. Where is truth other than the Quran? If somebody has a book that has better guidance, show it to us. Fatu bi kitabin huwa ahda minhu at tabi'hu in kuntum sadiqeen. Give me something that gives him better, better guidance. But there is no match, let alone better. Again, the same emphasis. Do not follow your whims or anybody's whims. Those who turn away, turn astray from Allah, they are going to be tormented badly in this life and in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nur, we've sent down clear ayat, signs and evidence and guidance. Wallahu yahdi may yasha'u ila suratim mustaqim. If you want the shortest cut between you and paradise, you follow those ayat bayinat. You follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then it follows the same surah. And they say we believe in Allah and in the Prophet, in the Messenger, and we obey. And then some of them turn away after that. Those who turn away from Allah, from His Messenger, or from their obedience, they are not to be called believers. This is the Quran, this is not my opinion or somebody's opinion, this is the text. No explanation is needed. وَإِذَا دُعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ إِذَا فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ When they are invited to Allah and His Messenger to judge between them, some of them will turn away. وَإِنْ يَكُنْ لَهُمُ الْحَقِّ يَأْتُوا إِلَيْهِ مُذْعِنِينَ When they know that Islam will judge for them, they come. So they come and tell you, doesn't Islam say this? So now those who planned and executed a full-fledged coup in some countries in the Middle East, they are saying, obeying the ruler is Islam. What ruler? What are we talking about? Whom are you cheating? It's Islam. No, it is not. No, it is not. I am committed to obey the ruler I choose and the ruler that follows my faith and follows my guidance and follows Allah's light and guidance. That's my commitment. I didn't pledge to someone who took over power by the sword 90 years ago or 100 years ago, it doesn't matter. Or by the tank a few months ago or a few years ago, it doesn't matter. I never gave them my pledge, nor should I. 
Because if I pledge to them, I am dooming myself. I can't. Then the Quran raises a rhetorical but informative question. Do they have a disease in their heart? Or have they doubted? Are they afraid that Allah would do them any injustice? Allah or his messenger. Are they afraid of Allah to be unjust? Is this why they don't want to come to his judgment? Brothers and sisters, reflect on those questions and ask yourself, does Allah have a saying in governance, in ruling, in public life? And the answer is obvious. He has everything to say and we have every obligation to obey. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to follow and obey. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salat wa salam ala ibadihi al-ladhin astafa wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abdu wa rasoolu wa ba'd So do they have disease in their heart or do they have doubt or do they have fear that Allah will wrong them will not be just Subhanallah hasha lillah hasha lillah then the commentary at the end is بل هم الظالمون Those are the wrongdoers. Those are the ones who are unjust. And then it concludes by the ayah إنما كان قول المؤمنين إذا دعوا إلى الله ورسوله ليحكم بينهم أن يقولوا سمعنا وأطعنا the only proper response expected of believers when they are invited for judgment by Allah or His Messenger, the only expected response is to say, we hear and we obey. And they come in submission. وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا As mentioned in Surah An-Nisa. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Those are the victorious winners before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why are we losing? Because we are not accepting Allah's judgment. Why are we losing? Because we have divorced Allah from his right and authority to guide us. Why are we in a miserable situation? It is because we have wronged ourselves. I know time has run out, but I hope that this gives us a view into the topic politics and governance in the Quran is a very, very serious issue. It is the dividing line between being a Muslim and following Pharaoh. You have to choose. You can't be with Moses and Pharaoh at the same time. If you follow Musa, you know where he's heading. If you follow Allah, you know where he's heading. If you follow the shaitan, you know where you are heading. If you follow Pharaoh, you know where you are heading. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the guidance and protect us from ourselves. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa qina wa sarif anna sharra ma qadayt. Allahumma qsim lana min khashiyatika ma tahulu bi baynana wa bayna maasiyatik, wa min taatika ma tubalighuna bihi jannatak. ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا اللهم لا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا اللهم لا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا وإذا أردت بقومنا فتنة فنجنا منها يا مولانا غير خزايا ولا مفتونين ولا مبدلين ولا مغيرين أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فستذكرون ما أقول لكم وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد وأقم الصلاة